Hi guys, it's Claire. Welcome back. Today I am bringing you the non-fiction section of my August reading wrap-up. So I read one non-fiction book this month and I listened to three others. So the first non-fiction book that I listened to this month was The Long Haul, A Trucker's Tales of Life on the Road by Finn Murphy. This is a memoir of sorts, although it's structured more as a series of stories and episodes in his life as a trucker. What's interesting about Finn Murphy is that he's kind of an anomaly in the trucking community in that he's from a pretty nice area of Connecticut I believe and he's also college educated. He's clearly very well read. He has a love of literature and words. He also is a VIP mover. He's doing really really expensive moves for high-end clients and he himself makes I think over two hundred thousand dollars a year he said which is way more than most truckers make so I wouldn't say that this book gives you insight into what the trucking lifestyle is like for the average trucker at the same time his sort of separation from the average trucker puts him in a pretty unique position to break down some of the overly masculine qualities of trucker culture and the sort of mythos of truckers being these new age American cowboys and lone rangers. What I found interesting is how often he acknowledges moments when he is scared or worried or feeling vulnerable in his job because a lot of it involves driving alone in isolated places on dangerous mountain passes in tricky weather conditions and he talks a lot about how scary that can be and it's wonderful to hear a guy who's in this sort of often viewed as masculine profession talking about how scared as shit he sometimes is when he's like driving in the snow somewhere on top of a mountain in Colorado. The other thing that I liked was just learning the ins and outs of the industry. There is wonderful and colorful jargon and vocabulary associated with the different kinds of truckers, the different kinds of trucks, what you're hauling. Just the lingo itself is so delightful and it really is a reminder of how many subcultures there are just in the world and there are so many different niches. I think a lot of people probably haven't given a second thought to like truckers or the trucking industry but this is just a window into how rich and colorful that world is. On a very basic level it's also a pretty good reminder to not be an asshole to the people who provide services for you. If you haven't gotten the memo, don't be a dick. If you're interested in the topic, I would definitely recommend checking it out. The next nonfiction book I read was Pioneer Girl Perspective, exploring Laura Ingalls Wilder. So I talked about this in my August book haul. It is a book of critical and academic essays about Pioneer Girl, which is the autobiography that Laura Ingalls Wilder wrote prior to writing any of her little house books. She then adapted that material and wrote the little house books and kind of kept the autobiography hidden throughout the rest of her life. It's a more truthful and often grim account of frontier life and it was finally published for public consumption in 2014. I have not read Pioneer Girl but by the end of all these essays I almost feel like I have. There are a few that are kind of basic sort of biographical type essays, one of which talks a lot about Rose Wilder Lane which I found very interesting. She was Laura Ingalls Wilder's only child and I didn't realize how instrumental she was in getting the Little House books published published. She was a working writer and sort of encouraged her mother to publish. She also heavily edited those books and there's a lot of speculation about her maybe actually having ghostwritten the Little House books, although I would say that based on these essays it's pretty clear that although she was an important editor, she was not the author of those books. Towards the end of the book you get more into essays that talk about the Little House books being less historical fiction and more fairy tale set on the frontier. So many people regard these books as history and Laura Ingalls Wilder and Rose Wilder Lane herself were quite invested in emphasizing the truth of these books even though they're not all truthful. They are fiction based on her childhood, but they contain a lot of the mythology and a lot of the devices that fairy tales often have. So I thought that that different reading of those books was interesting and really 
some of the strongest parts of this book. The one caveat I have is that I do believe that these were all commissioned by the South Dakota State Historical Society, so largely they are analyzing Pioneer Girl and the Little House books, but they are also certainly celebrating them. So you don't find a lot of criticism, criticism of these books in terms of negativity. Some of the essays talk about her problematic depiction of Native Americans, but they kind of mention it and then move on. So yeah, this book certainly has its agenda and it's part of advancing the legacy of the Little House books, but it is interesting. Laura Ingalls Wilder was born in Wisconsin, then they moved to Kansas, and then moved back to Wisconsin, and that's where Little House in the Big Woods picks up. But when they were traveling back from Kansas to Wisconsin, they left the Bulldog Jack just like with someone else like they sold two of their horses and Jack loved the horses so they just sold Jack too and like she didn't have a bulldog Jack for like the rest of her life and it's like was all made up in the books and I was like what? So yeah that whole horrible moving scene of Jack dying was completely fabricated but I mean whatever we all have to grow up sometimes. Next up I listened to Shrill by Lindy West, which I have seen all over the place in the last six or nine months. In these essays she talks about topics like being a fat woman, being a feminist, being an internet writer and a woman, and it's just a really cool kick-ass collection of essays. I think the parts that I found most interesting were where she talks about growing up being a non-conventionally beautiful woman or being a woman who takes up too much space and is too visible in that sense but also because of that is also invisible and she talks about how being overly sexualized can be horrible for women but also being desexualized can be just as if not more horrible and how you know women just can't win <laughs> when it comes to that there's an essay where she talks about being in kind of her late teens and early 20s and being aware that this is the period when most women are the most beautiful and the most perfect that they're ever going to be and feeling like she is missing out on that golden window and she's missing out on youth and beauty by not being a conventionally thin or beautiful person and I think that a lot of women can relate to feeling like you're failing as a woman or feeling insufficient or feeling like you just are not enough and it was really ugh, it hits you where it hurts you know so I thought that was just like really wonderful it's really a book that I wish I could have given to myself when I was a teenager and the last book that I listened to this month was Black Elk Speaks this is an account of the life of Black Elk who was a holy man medicine man of the Oglala tribe and it was published in 1932 and related by John G. Nehart. I thought it was nonfiction then while I was listening to it I read something that said that John G. Nehart embellished parts of it or more parts of it than people initially thought and now I need to do some further reading. So like I said he was a holy man in his tribe and he talks about the vision that he had when he was nine years old where he had a vision of the six grandfathers of his nation who came to him and told him how to do the work of his nation. Then the book goes through the course of his life. The most heartbreaking and moving parts of this book are where he recounts the slaughter and massacre at Wounded Knee and that was just really devastating. I don't think that we learn enough about or read enough about the perspective of Native Americans in this horrible genocide that happened. The writing in it is quite plain and straightforward and I can't say that I didn't get a little bit fatigued listening to it sometimes, but I certainly got more than a few things out of it. The initial reason that I picked it up was because I saw there's a new biography about Black Elk out that is just massive, but I was quite interested in it. And then I realized that this sort of first person account already existed, so I thought that I would check that out before reading the biography. But while I was listening to it, I did find myself wishing that I had more historical background and background information about him. So maybe I should have done it in opposite order of checking out the biography first and then reading this account. But we'll see, I'll report back if and when I get to that book too. Those are the nonfiction books that I read and listened to in the month of August. My September reading is well underway, so I will be back at you soon with another video. Thanks guys, see you next time.